turn on the video, get the video on. So uh, uh, we have our regular scheduled meeting for this Tuesday, which is October 25th. I hope you all know it's 2022. Uh, the meeting will be broadcast live, premium channel, Comcast channel 98, and Verizon channel 34. Uh, if, if you would, I would like to call everybody to pledge allegiance. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Next on our meeting agenda, we have a joint meeting with both the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee, and the discussion is the warrants which uh, is uh, being prepared for our upcoming meeting, town meeting. There's a great uh, town administrator. Uh, you can get a table or a chair over there, or there's one at the end of the table over there, Greg. Uh, so uh, in any event, we have both uh, Finance Committee and Joint uh, and the Capital Planning Committee for a discussion on the warrant, stabilization fund policy, and other financial matters. And we have both of our chairs here, Brandon and Gil, so I, whichever of you two want to start off, I'll, I'll leave it to you to decide. Um, might I suggest first I pass out the final versions? Of sure, please. Can you give a summary, um, Greg, of all the changes? I, I will do that, but I figured we all have the same piece yeah. of paper that way. So, yeah. as you know, we've been following the same procedure. We met once uh, as a capital planning committee. Uh, Ted and I are representative of the finance committee on that, so we were there. And after the list of recommendations was established, the finance committee met two nights later and went through and voted to recommend some of the articles and some were left open for further discussion. And okay. there was a meeting, I think, after your after the meeting with you to, to work through those last couple of things. Understood. Thank you. Does anyone else? Oh, yeah. Of course, sir. Would you like corn? Sure. Okay. And, uh, okay, let's not forget. Okay, great. It's still warm. Hmm. And uh, I'm also just going to, and you've, most of you have seen this, but again, I. I know sometimes it's hard to print all of this out. Yeah. So it's not so much the it's the Everybody's got the same version of the warrant and the, uh, the draft capital request. So I'll go back to uh, the chair of the finance committee, Gil. Um, maybe we should start with. Okay, uh, I'll, 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 you want me to go through each one? And no. Okay, so Article 1, uh, that was voted by the finance committee. However, Subsequent to the Finance Committee's vote, we became aware of some unpaid bills from the town clerk. Uh, so I recommend that the FinCom uh, retake the vote to uh, 
incorporate the town clerk bills. Those are, you can see there, it's the 5738 and the 22485. But we'll do those after the select is meeting. After they hit agenda item three, we'll con uh, convene separately and we have a room to do our findings. Okay. Yeah. Rather than pull All right. And uh, Article 2 was voted by the Finance Committee. Uh, nothing's changed from when they voted it. This is, um, I should state the first one is to do with unpaid bills. And we had a total of 1,832.03 in unpaid bills. Article 2 is to do with putting money um, from the ambulance receipts reserved for appropriation to the budget, and this was voted. Uh, this is done on a routine basis. Article 3 has to do with uh, supplementing the operating budget. Uh, there were a number of items uh, that uh, have to be addressed. Uh, hope to uh, reduce this in the future. Uh, but in any case, uh, three of them have, are due to uh, not being factored in at the town meeting in spring, and one is uh, due to uh, a change uh, in terms of the library director wishing to upgrade the internet connection in the library. Um, so that was voted by the finance committee. Excuse me, Greg. Now that the amount is two thousand less, would we need to uh, take another vote on that? Uh, actually, you should. Okay. Yes, there was there was a typo. It said eighty nine, yeah. and and it was uh, one of uh, your members astutely. Uh, discovered it was 3,000 overstated. That was a, a scrivener's error. I apologize for that. Um, Article 4, um, we had, uh, um, we, uh, Article 4 and 5, um, those were created after we discussed with the Finance Committee. And the reason for that is, um, we uh, um, wish to fund the, the highway and the firefighters contract, but neither of them have been uh, come to agreement on. So that's why there's an empty amount there. Uh, no vote needs to be taken tonight. Uh, it will only be relevant if uh, we come to an agreement with either of them. In order for um, the contract to be to, to go into effect the first year has to be appropriated at town meeting. Um, should one or both of them not be um, agreed to uh, by town meeting, uh, then we would uh, do Article 6, which will put uh, what we estimate to be the amount needed into a stabilization fund. Uh, that allows us to use raise and appropriate monies, monies from taxation. Uh, if we don't do that at this town meeting, we can't capture them in, for, for 23. And these contracts start in uh, 23. Um, should either of those unions we be unable to come to agreement, um, they will not be funded uh, until the spring. And that, of course, would assume that uh, uh, we came to some kind of agreement by then. Article 7, during the um, uh, annual town meeting, there were a number of uh, uh, ongoing capital items that were not funded by the schools. Uh, these are being funded here using raise and appropriate, which would have occurred had we funded them in the spring. Uh, we do have uh, uh, sufficient number amounts of raise and appropriate. Um, we have a, a 1.6 million delta between revenue estimates and revenue actual. Um, Article 8 um, is a um, funding of an emergency backup generator. It's a capital item. Um, and that was supported by both the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee. I should state Article 7 also was supported by Capital in addition to the Finance Committee. 
Article 9 is for a truck for cemetery. It's in very poor state. Uh, that was supported by both Finance Command and Capital. Article 10, uh, that is for a, uh, a truck uh, for the ship commanders and the fire department. That was supported by both uh, uh, Finance Committee and Capital. Article 11 um, uh, repurposes some of the monies used to fund the um, fire pumper truck as voted it, uh, at the meeting of November 1st, 2021. Um, came from ambulance receipts reserved for appropriation. Uh, upon further reflection, it, it believes a better source is uh, free cash. So this substitutes free cash for the ambulance receipts for appropriation. And again, that was supported by both the Finance Committee and Capital Planning Committee. Article 12 uh, is for McKin McKinney baseball field. Now this one was recommended by the um, capital planning committee but not by the finance committee. Um, the park and rec director unfortunately had a conflict and was not uh, able to come tonight. Uh, I did however email um, all of you or you should have gotten it from Gil if you're on the finance committee a um, uh, back up regarding the, um, the need for this request. Um, the next one is for three patrol cars uh, for the police. This is Article 13. Um, the Capital Planning Committee voted uh, to support this. The Finance Committee has yet to take a vote. They wanted more information in terms of vehicle ages. Uh, I believe that was um, provided to all of them through through Gil and, and Chris. Um, so that's another one that needs to be further discussed. Article 14 is a um, uh, would fund uh, two million toward the senior center um, uh, addition renovation. Um, this is an addition to five hundred thousand that was voted through the American Rescue Plan Act, and additionally a hundred and sixty thousand that had been previously appropriated by town meeting. About forty thousand of that hundred. 60 has already been spent. Um, our finances do not allow us to finance this within the tax levy. Uh, so to do this, uh, it is contingent upon a debt exclusion, and that was requested by, by the board. Um, Article 15 is for Kings Pond Dam and Bridge uh, guard. Gard Gardener Street. Um, that's for 2.5 million. Uh, once again, that uh, there are not adequate monies to support that within the tax levy. Uh, we could try to borrow for it within the tax levy, but the problem is, is we have Bristol Plymouth to worry about. We do not wish to add more debt. Um, to what is already uh, going to be a very high debt burden uh, for which we're still formulating a long-term plan of action. Um, so to fund this, uh, we believe um, that uh, the appropriate way would be through a debt exclusion. Uh, it should not be noted that in both Article 14 and 15, um, it, it was supported by both the Finance Committee and Capital Planning Committee. Um, if this article uh, goes forth and is supported by town meeting, uh, it will go to the ballot uh, for a debt exclusion vote. Um, uh, fortunately, the tax burden of these two items is far less than, than say, the, the Bristol Plymouth uh, school would have been. Article 16 
um, involves Mill Street Bridge. Now, already town meeting has appropriated one million one hundred and fifty thousand for this. This would provide the four hundred and fifty remaining needed to to move forward on the the project. It's already gone out to bid. Um, and this was supported by both the Finance Committee and Capital Planning Committee. Article 17 uh, is um, uh, a supplement to Chapter 90 funds. You have done this over many years. Typically, it is less money. I believe it's 450. However, um, uh, there was one year missed in this. Plus, there were a number of highway projects that were not actually endorsed by capital and the finance committee. Uh, so it was felt to try to put as much as we could to, to be able to move forward on a number of these other projects that did not uh, make it through capital and in the finance committee. Uh, Article 18 is to support a um, multi-purpose tractor. Uh, the total cost on this is $160,000. Um, however, there, uh, uh, Highway did receive a $50,000 grant toward this, so the town cost would be $110,000, again, endorsed by both Finance Committee and Capital. Article 19 is for salt spreader. Uh, this would be added to an existing truck that, that lacks it. Uh, this is for 13000 and again, endorsed by both the Finance Committee and Capital Planning Committee. Article 20, um, John Deere Mower, um, and that's $22,000. Uh, I should state all these. I'm, I've been listing the last few um, items are all highway. Um, and that, that was supported by both the Finance Committee and Capital Planning Committee. Uh, now we're past the capital items. Article 21 is to uh, add an additional amount uh, to the other post-employment benefit trust fund uh, that was established according to Chapter 32B, Section 20, uh, and that's meant to offset future health costs for retirees. I believe that was first set up in about 2014. And uh, Chris, do you know how much is in that account right now? Uh, I'm going to. It's somewhere in the vicinity of five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Article Twenty Two. So what? Um, what this? Uh, what I've gone through uh, takes. Uh, we were certified free cash of roughly three million twenty-five thousand. Um, what has been endorsed by capital, and again, it's slightly less for um, FinCom because they didn't vote for one item and they have yet to take a vote on, on the other item. Uh, but what was endorsed by capital was $1,980,165. In, in projects. Um, with that, we felt comfortable in setting aside $1,040,000 uh, of free cash toward the general stabilization fund. Um, so that, that would, um, um, currently the stabilization fund is about $4.4 million. Uh, this would add uh, over a million more to that. Um, that would put us well above the 10% um, threshold that has been long-standing policy of the town is to have the equivalent of 10% of, of the general fund budget, um, which is about $46 million in, in the um, stabilization fund. This would bring us more toward uh, a little less than 12%. Now the reason for this increase is to account for the uncertainty brought about by Bristol Plymouth. And as we get more information, 
um, you know, particularly for next year, uh, where we won't have this, fortunately, we won't have the full burden of, of Bristol, Plymouth, we can adjust our free cash policy uh, accordingly. Um, we are getting uh, mixed information right now from Bristol, Plymouth as to when uh, uh, things are likely to move forward. Uh, but at this point, it's looking more and more likely that it's going to be no, it will not be 2025 when it fully hits us, but 2026. So, uh, and that assumes um, in particular that when they go out to bid, it's within budget. And uh, we are finding, I, I think uh, Joe brought up some examples of contracts last meeting. Uh, what we're hearing is there's an, an enormous disparity right now between estimates of school costs and what actually is occurring. Uh, Norfolk Regional um, recently went out. They, it was $20 million over budget. Tisbury Elementary um, recently went out. It was $26 million over budget. And you know you're talking a sixty, what's supposed to be a sixty, seventy million dollar bud building, and you know so these are very large percentages. Um, uh, it's a, a, the nature of the market right now, and we're seeing this all over the place. Uh, um, some of the uh, department heads were telling me stories of vehicles that they had. Uh, uh, last last time they got quoted on it was 55, and then now they they went out again, and the price was 88 for the same truck. Uh, I don't. Boy, that's enormous uh, increases. Um, the next one has to do with uh, sewer. This is Article 23. Uh, that one is. Uh, they wish to set up a. They already set up a stabilization fund, but they did not put any money into it. So what this would do is it would put 300000 into the stabilization fund. They hope to continue to put more money into this. It's meant to, to cover uh, upgrades, uh, the town portion of, of anticipated upgrades to the Totten uh, sewer treatment facility. Um, they don't, the costs on that are still unknown, but um, uh, by all indications, that's not going to be cheap. Um, Article 24, um, no recommendation was taken on that by either the capital or the FinCom, um, as that does not involve finances. Um, uh, this was reworded a little in line with what um, our town lawyer recommended, so he has signed off on that. Um, basically, this will allow the town clerk not to have uh, Saturday early voting. Uh, currently, they have to have Saturday early voting, and often they have very little turnout. Can I just comment on that? It isn't about early voting, it's about voter registration. Okay, we well, I'm sorry. We continue to have early voting on Saturday. I, I apologize. Uh, my, I questioned that because yeah. I was surprised by that. Yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, voter registration, not, not early voting. Um, and then Article 25. Uh, last May, you may recall, um, there was an article on um, uh, for surplus property. Um, that article, uh, I believe, um, was based upon um, the, um, Chapter 30B procurement law prior to an uh, uh, update in 2016. Um, I felt the law should be changed to reflect uh, the current law, however, um, it would have made it would have necessitated major changes, 
and the vast majority of communities in the state do not do this through a bylaw. They do it through a procedure as voted by the select board. And that is allowed by Massachusetts law. And again, that's the norm in the state. So rather than try to change a bylaw, um, which I felt uh, was not reflective of current law, uh, it, it made more sense just to uh, rescind the, the bylaw and to do this through a procedure. So I want to stress we're not getting rid of per, uh, um, a surplus policy procedure. Uh, we're just doing it through another way. Uh, and again, the, the, the way that's normatic throughout most of the state. Anything else, uh, Greg? You're all set? Please? I'm all set. Okay, so let me refer back to the chair of our finance department, I feel. So what the finance committee needs to do is we need to re-vote on Article 1 and 3 because there were changes to the totals, and we'll do that after the meeting. And then we are going into discussion on Articles 12 and 13. Okay. Yeah, question. Don't we need a vote from the selectmen to change the policy regarding free cash before we continue to move on? We had already voted on that back in June to add additional funds to it. Right, but didn't you vote a certain percentage? Yes, so we would have to change that, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I would make a motion to modify that policy consistent with um, the outline in the town meeting uh, warrant proposal. A second, Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That, that article, as, as it says, will say, the board just voted for it as it says. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other? Nothing else? We're all set. I I'd just like to thank the select and, 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 and for upping the number uh, to agree with capital and finance. It makes our job a lot easier. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. And thank you, uh, Capital Planning and Finance Committee. And the reason you know, I supported that was really just to send a message that we need to tighten our belts as much as we can with what we're dealing with. But obviously, I know you did a great job going through. It really was what we need to do. So appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is that, and, and as the Chief was uh, up here with the motion, it gives us a bit more flexibility with our free cash as it relates to capital, which is where we need to be at this jet junction. So it's the right thing to do at the right time. We're totally supportive. Greg, do you, you need us to vote to approve this, right? Because finance committee will just be voting whether, whether to recommend it or not. Yeah, so what uh, what is actually going to be posted, it, I, I had a lot of conversations, is without the posted in the six locations is without the recommendations. Mm -hmm. But what will be sent out to the mm -hmm. mailing will have the recommendations. So I will, I will be incorporating those recommendations once I find out what the final ones are into the document that gets sent out. Uh, but you need to you need to, this is actually without the recommendations. Yes. I don't need to show them in. Well, voting to accept and close the yeah. bars. Well, do we have to go off? <laughs> sorry, what? Do we have to go off and meet on the other four articles that are still open for finance committee? Only whether to recommend it. Well, so I think what we have to figure out is if the board wants to vote this as presented or not. And if we do want to vote as presented, then it's just a matter of whether FinCom okay. is going to be recommending right. them or not. Yeah. Okay. We're so. here in this a joint meeting until uh, 7 o'clock, and and so if... Yeah, I would like to adjourn the Finance Committee to the other conference room. Oh, okay. yes. Discuss these, and I can come back to you. Sure. Yes. Yeah.
Jim, I yep. just have one question, sure. maybe sure. Mr. Barnes can clarify this for me. Um, hopefully Article 6 won't be necessary because there's any contracts will be resolved. But does that create a problem with negotiations? If you put a certain amount in there, well, you'll be charged with unfair labor practice? That's why we didn't put an amount in. Okay. Yeah, we left it blank. So four, five, and six it have to do with the contract. Yeah, but, but what if we don't have signed contracts? Well, all we're doing is setting aside an amount in the stabilization fund. We, we, we can always supplement that amount, uh, but what we're trying to do is we're raising it through taxation, and we can only do that through the special town meeting. It does not present a problem. Okay, uh, I have done it many, many times in, in the past, in my previous employ. It's an estimate, and again, it's our estimate, but right. yes, it's quite possible that whatever is settled on could cost more, but um, it's just money in an account available to help fund that, that amount. But we're not saying that just because we put that particular amount in, that's, that's what the contract's going to cost. All right, thank you for that. Yes, no, yeah. Greg, I, I, I agree with Pat. Mm. Um, when I sat on the finance committee, this came up, and we were advised not to do it because of um, the fire. So if you put in ten thousand dollars, that's what you're willing to give. Maybe they're only asking for eight. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I would recommend not doing it for collective bargaining. But maybe I'll talk to Joe Emerson and see what they uh, I did, and I asked Joe if. I did actually today. I said, "Are you okay with the three articles?" And he said they were fine. Those were his very words. And again, if you look at Article Six, it also makes reference to both fire and highway. So it's not you're not you're not specifically saying who it's going to. You're just saying it's going to one of those contracts. To check with uh, Joe Emerson, I, 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 I did this. Do the board members have a problem with, with that? You can always take no action at it at the, yeah, at the town meeting. But again, the thinking is you want to raise, an, these are operating costs, mm -hmm. and you want to use raise and appropriate monies. It should be factored into the budget through taxation. And should you not come to agreement with one or both of these unions by um, town meeting, um, the fact of the matter is you will be paying retro, assuming you agree to some sort of dollar amount for fiscal 2023. 20, uh, and with stabilization funds, you can always vote to, at town meeting, to repurpose the monies. The, these monies, you can call it what you want, but you can always say to reappropriate the monies toward uh, the senior center. It, 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 there's a lot of flexibility when doing this. I understand. My only concern was, as Mr. Lewis said, as far as it could be, um, have a problem with negotiations. Uh, again, uh, I specifically had Joe Emerson look at these articles, and I had a conference call today, uh, which you know about, and after uh, we got through one thing, uh, I went through another, and my last item was, have you seen the warrant, and are you okay with the, the three articles, and again, he said they were fine, and he, he found them to be completely acceptable. <coughs> Okay. I could get, if you want me to have him put it in writing, I'd be happy to do that. Hopefully we'll have both contracts finalized right then, and it won't be an issue. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a very positive way to look at it. Uh, the next item on our agenda, and we will reconvene with the Finance Committee after they've looked at the several articles that we've already uh, identified, and we will vote at that time. In the meantime, uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, acceptance of the minutes of our October 18th meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. So approved.
department heads. I know we have the police chief here, but he's not here to give a report. He's here to deal with the, uh, with the finance committee uh, articles. So we'll move on. I don't believe there are any appointments, and there is no hearing. So. Is there yes, a the hearing on the agenda for shots? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Thank I, I did Thank tell that. Now, mind you, I did tell that uh, the lawyer called, and at the time, uh, did not want to um, uh, uh, have their client pay more than needed. So I said seven you know it was still okay to show up at seven um so he will be here at, at seven so we'll we'll postpone that until uh, seven o'clock and we will then have the hearing there's also uh, a uh, completion of old business update on authorization to change locks at the uh, jim connor building and uh, that that was uh, a, 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 an item that was put Fourth on the agenda by Selectman Pacheco. So I'll certainly turn to you first, uh, Selectman Pacheco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think, really, to me, what what has to be established is the process that took place to have this happen. Um, my understanding, and that's been confirmed, is that the locks were changed at Gordon Colony, and the park and rec department was asked to turn in keys. Um, and this board didn't take that action. They spoke to the health director who oversees ACO. The health director had no knowledge of it. I spoke to the town administrator. The town administrator had no knowledge of it. And my concern, again, as it typically is, is around process. Processes have to be followed. It preserves the integrity of the board. It preserves the integrity of every process. And the comparison would be, if this continues to be allowed, there's nothing that would preclude one of us, for example, from asking for the locks to be changed at town hall. And so, what we need to do is figure out what happened and put a policy in place to prevent this from happening in the future because it, it, it just can't happen. And so um, that is what I would present to the board. Okay. I have a few comments to make and then I'll defer to that. If you don't mind, let me, let me uh, uh, jump in on that. And my comments are as follows. Um, I agree that this is a very important subject about qualification. Uh, so uh, let me just say that the Board of Selectmen agreed to renovate the building, the Jim Connor building, with the much needed and beautiful animal shelter. We included community room, a community room for Park and Rec's annual only events as per the agreement. No reference, by the way, in the agreement is to use 50% of the building, and I have that agreement here. We, that is to say, Dan and I, even went the extra mile with our very limited budget and built the an enclosed stage with outside speakers for Park and Rec's horse sports events. Outside events such as horse sporting events customarily use uh, porta pots and in fact they have already agreed to that in the discussion. Check out the dozens used at the horse shows on Elm Street use the bathroom with specify for annual events using the community room. This is all about, by way of leading up to this key issue that you're talking about. So let's consider unsupervised access to the bathroom, which is in the middle of the animal shelter with potential rain ham liability issues. Casual use of the bathroom with animals in the shelter raises liability concerns regarding animal bites, rabies, ticks, and flea bites, chemicals, etc. State rules and regulations control access to the animal holding shelters concerning animal infectious diseases and medical chemicals. <coughs> Casual traffic in shelter areas is unsafe. The licensed ECO, ACO is responsible for safety at the shelter. OSHA standards need to be adhered to. Our animal shelter is a holding facility, not an adoption center. No holding shelters, none, allow unattended public access to the shelter. For example, consider our neighbor Taunton. There is no casual entrance to the shelter in Taunton without an unauthorized ACO. And as their ACO said to me, the shelter is not a zoo. There are quarantined animals contagious diseases, etc., 
in the holding area. My concern is always for the safety of our residents and for avoiding any potential liability. Our animal shelter must be attended by the animal control officer in the event that there is any park and rec department access to the inside bathroom. So let's cycle back to authorization for changing locks, which is the issue which Selectman Kachiko just mentioned. The short story is there are three doors to the Jim Connor building. There is the front door to the community room, the inside door to the shelter, and a back door for bringing <coughs> and removing animals. For the sake of safety and liability, I urge the board to issue one key for the community room to park and rec for access to the community room. In addition to access to the community room, a separate key for access to the two animal shelter doors to be issued only to the animal control officer. I believe, by the way, the front lock was changed, and as I understand it, the front door lock was changed because, the, because it didn't work properly, and uh, Dan Andre was out of town, and I'm told that the building commissioner ordered the changed lock on the front door so that the front door could be used. You can check with our executive assistant, Deb. She has more information on that. When Park and Rec has an annual event, and by the way, that is well spelled out in the agreement, annual events. Uh, just review the memorandum, and I have copies of it here. Requiring use of the bathroom and the shelter, they should coordinate this with the animal control officer. Personally, I do not have an ax to grind. My concern is for the safety of our residents and potential town liability. By the way, all chemicals used to sanitize and etc. out of candles cannot be put under lock and key. Our shelter, like most, uses a product called Rescue, which is a disinfectant for veterinary use. It's a 55-gallon drum. The only way to lock this up is to lock up access to the shelter. Taunton Animal Shelter does not put all of their material used daily under lock and key every time they leave the, the, the holding area. The door is locked to general access. Safety is their primary concern, and so is it ours. So here's my motion to the board. Access to the animal shelter, the inside and rear doors, is limited to the animal control officer. Park and rec should only have a key to the front door, which gives access to the community room. Access to the bathroom for annual park and rec events ought to be coordinated between the animal control officer and the park and rec department. I'll just end with this. If there's any question on this motion uh, uh, about the potential liability of casual insiders in the animal shelter without the supervision of the animal control officer, then I strongly urge the board to request town council's op opinion concerning potential town liability for unsupervised access to the animal shelter. So let me go back and say the motion is, please, there should be one key for the inside door and the back door to the animal control officer to control access. One key to the front door for the pocket Rex annual events, and certainly the bathroom should be available. We want to accommodate them, but the bathroom must be that the inside must be supervised by an animal control officer so that nobody gets in trouble, touches a, a, a dog that's there because of biting, and this and that. So that's my motion. I, I have a motion. Well, Mr. Chairman, oh, the point of information, the Chairman can't make a motion. Okay, so, so may I have a motion? Uh, well, not yet, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Just a couple of questions. So my understanding is the Executive Assistant informed us that it was you who authorized the changing of the locks, not the building commissioner. My, let, let me explain this because this seems to be a big issue on your part, uh, Selectman Pacheco. Throughout the course of the construction of the animal shelter, there were two people that worked there every week. I was one of the two. Neither one of the other board members spent two minutes there throughout the entire process. Okay? Not two, because I was there all the time. You, you, your expo so, so your exposure to the animal shelter is a result of the community event that we had. The reason I bring that up, Selectman Pacheco, is as follows. Dan and I were intimately involved with where the fences go, where the, you know, where the shelter things go. So it was natural 
that is part of the total involvement in the construction of the shelter, we were concerned about the keys as well. That was just part of the process. We never asked you for where the fence should go. We never asked you where the cage should go. And by golly, we didn't ask you where the keys should go. So if you want to make a major issue out of it, it's because I was intimately involved in the week-to-week -week construction, some, some weeks more than one day a week. So th that's the short answer to your question. I was there, you were not there, and I'm very much aware of the issues, and I would hope that you would understand and respect the fact that my concern is to make the center, the, 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 the shelter, work effectively in a safe way for the town without liability. That was my orientation, and I'm sorry if that, if that upsets some people. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, it does, and the, the bigger problem is Alan Perry, the interim health director, who supervises the animal control department didn't even have knowledge of this. Decisions are being made in the vacuum, and that is not how this town operates. Yeah. That is not how any effective organization operates. Our health director, and it was you, Mr. Chairman, who wanted the ACO to report to the Board of Health. He had no knowledge. That cannot happen. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. You know, I think we ought to stay focused, okay? I think you're, you're, you're seriously, I think for the benefit of the town, for the best interest of the town, I sincerely believe that this board should focus on the motion I made. Let's not, do, you know, all we're doing at this point is, is diverting the real issue to, a, to an issue which shouldn't even be on the table. The issue is, are we going to protect our people? Are we going to protect the town residents from any potential injury and a potential liability? That's the issue. Can we deal with that issue? Is that, to me, the issue you're talking about is tertiary. I'm talking about something that is primary. Let's let Pat Ryder, who's been a very patient, talk. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, do I understand you saying that if the Park and Recreation Commission is having annual events, then they will have access to yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and that would be coordinated for the animal? Yeah, just to protect the people who go in there so that they don't accidentally walk into a chemical or get an interval. And then so some of these animals have diseases that call them zoo zoantics or whatever. Yeah, so, so it would be available. And by the way, just to, you know, to, you know uh, Alan Perry doesn't know this either. We just look seriously at building a separate bathroom. We did. In fact, it's in this book, and I'm going to give you a complete set of plans. And it just turns out that to put in a separate bathroom, would have cost the town somewhere to be forty to fifty thousand dollars, and we just didn't have the money. Please. Yeah. What about outdoor access? Was that not feasible? Because from what I understand, the bathroom is going to have outdoor access. That would have solved the whole problem. Yeah, and that would have been the forty thousand because it's concrete floors, and all the plumbing would have had to been moved from the inside of the building to the outside. And you know, we can get a full report from the building committee, but I can tell you categorically that it just wasn't we had a budget of two hundred thousand dollars and we couldn't put fifty forty fifty thousand but to putting in an outside you know bathroom we just didn't have the money but we but that's not an issue we have no problem with pocket rec using the bathroom it's just a question of being careful that it's done in a way that's safe and secure that's all and that's the motion well, I, well that's my request for the motion I'm sorry I think, um, Mr. Chairman, because there are a lot of players involved, you know, Mr. Perry, who's the um, supervising animal control and park and recreation, before I would be willing to make that motion, I perhaps we could table that for the next meeting so we could get some input from them. Because I'm just not sure if park and recreation commission or department would need keys for access in an emergency situation because that building does come under the purview of park and recreation um, department. So not for access for events or whatever, but maybe they would need to have those keys just as a safeguard in case something happened there and the animal control officer was in there. No, that would, uh, I, I, you know, I think what we need to do is really seriously consider engaging our lawyer to give us a position relative to liability for unprofessional, unqualified people with, in that area without uh, having the supervision of somebody that is qualified. I think if, if this board is going to do their job at all, 
let's at least get a motion to get what uh, town council involved in the liability because if the board's going to ignore the potential liability of having general access to that to that to that shelter holding area it isn't it is not an adoption center it's a holding area that has animals with diseases and illnesses and viruses you and i'm not saying this because i you know, it's, my concern is the liability of the town and the safety of the people. And if we want to push this down the road, let's engage, let's have a motion to engage our lawyer, because when the lawyer comes back, and I'll guarantee you it's going to be there's a liability, we are going to be forced to deal with the fact that if that key is out there and people can go in there without a, without a certified animal control officer. I want to come back also to this point about Alan Perry. I'm not sure you're talking about Mr. Perry's concern about what keys are there. Is that what you're talking about? My what my statement was is he had no knowledge of it. And so so what what, what would his knowledge of the keys have, have to do with the? Well, considering the animal control department falls under his jurisdiction, I would think it would be reasonable for him to understand that the locks were being changed because he should have a key to that building. The locks were not being changed. The only lock that was changed was the front door. The discussion was. Should we change those locks for the very reasons I told you? We didn't, if, if what you were saying had any merit at all, we would have, the locks would have been changed. The locks were not changed. Well, nothing and should have been changed because they weren't proved that. They, they weren't they changed. Were. They no. were, and we paid a bill. No, th no wait a minute. The only, the only lock that was changed, to my knowledge, is the front door. That's that, and I'm not disputing that. What I'm saying is wait. no lock should have been changed without a process in place that have approved it. The, the door wouldn't work with the lock that was there. What's your problem with that? We wanted the door to work so they could get in there. You got a problem with the door working? I have a problem with processes not being done. Listen, followed. the animal control officer reports to the health department. The health department has every opportunity to communicate every minute of the day with the ACO. I don't report to the animal, to, to the health director. The ACO reports to the health director. The ACO is very familiar with every aspect of what we're doing. She's certified, she's licensed, she's the full-time person. So when you talk about the, the keys that are being changed, the double locks that are being changed, there's only one lock that was changed, and that was done by the, by the building commissioner. What is your problem with that? Well, so again, nothing was approved. The health director who should have approved this had no knowledge. That's ridiculous. Of it. I mean, that's that's not even an argument. That's that. I mean, it's very hard to be sympathetic with that argument. The health director should have been told that the front door didn't work. Yes. Oh, please, give me a break. That's what's your motion is. I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we put this on the agenda for the next meeting and perhaps ask our town administrator to check with our health director and park and recreation department just to make sure that everybody knows what's going on we're all on the same page. I'll second for discussion. Discussion, the park and rec commission is here. Perhaps they want to offer some input now so they don't have to keep coming back every week. So if you want to come up, uh, Chris, please. Chris, sure. there's, no, there's no microphone, Chris, so talk louder, I guess. So. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things, Josh Daisy, you also want to commission. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, I appreciate the fact that it sounds like you're starting to conform and, and, and become a team when it, when it comes to the Gymkhana building. Uh, as of the last meeting, you were totally against anybody being in there, but the animal control officer, and it sounds like you, uh, you know, you would agree to the fact that you would, we have some type of shared access to that bathroom when we have our, uh, when we have our, our programs there. Um, one of the problems with that is that we don't, we don't always know when we're going to have programs there. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, other groups reach out. They ask us for access to a community room. That was a community room that we used in the past. It would be again. Um, to, I, I think it's going to be difficult to try to have some type of uh, uh, joint uh, effort to try to get somebody to have the uh, ability to use that space. Um, I, I, if I was the animal control officer, I would be certainly inconvenienced if uh, I had to be here at night for programs. Um, I just don't know what her contract's like or anything like that or what her pay scale is and if you get paid overtime for that or what it is. But, but I guess that can be discussed if a motion is ever made to uh, accept, accept your proposal. Um, 
the front door key, the front door lock is not broken. I don't know who was. It's, it's not broken now. It was replaced. Right. It was not broken to begin with. I right. used. I was in that building uh, several times using that key. There's nothing wrong with that lock. Whoever may have tried to get in may have had the wrong key. May have not uh, known how to use the lock on that door. But that lock was not broken. What, well, Chris? Were there any other keys that uh, any other locks that were changed? Not that I'm aware of. Well, okay, I that's what we just heard about the locks were changed. You see, I, we could qualify your last point. That, sorry to interrupt, but it's just you know, it's an interaction. I was told that they changed it because they had trouble using the, the, the lock that was there. Now, maybe it was just occasionally, but let me just make it eminently clear. I had nothing to do with changing, uh, although I'm being accused of that, I had nothing to do with changing that lock. I was told it wasn't working. The lock was changed by our building commissioner, not me. He never asked me to change it, but go ahead, please. Okay. Um, so, the lock was never broken. I don't know why it needed to be changed. I don't know who made the direction to have it changed. I don't know how much it costs to get changed. I don't even know if we have a key to it anymore. Quite honestly, there was none in the key box on Saturday when I was there. Um, so I didn't have access to the building. Um, uh, uh, to rehash, um, and I know this is about changing up the locks, but just to rehash, uh, Mr. Shago. Yep. This all started with meetings amongst us. You first came to a meeting in April of 2021. Yep. At our request, when we learned that there was a need or a desire to build or re repurpose the Jim Connor building for an animal control uh, office. Yeah. At that meeting, you um, presented uh, with Mr. Andre. Andre, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And when mention of having the building uh, shared, you were completely against it. Um, and oh, right. after that meeting, um, it's been told to me that the animal control officer was resigning because she was against a shared space. And, um, you know, since then, you weren't involved in any of the, the meetings that we had, and I'm not sure why that is. But in the other me two or three meetings that we had, um, just to go over what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, there was a rough rough diagram that was presented by Mr. I. Frady to the Park and Rec Commission, to Mr. Andre. And Mr. I. Frady asked us, draw in what you expect to see from this building transition. And uh, basically, we drew a line down the middle of the building. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's not what, what I'm talking about, but the, that's the rough, rough sketch. We drew, we drew a line down the middle, uh, the middle of the building. Mr. Andre had spoke to us about structural issues and you can't do this, you can't put a wall here because of that, you can't put a door here because of this. And you know, we, we bowed to his, uh, to his expertise in, in the matter and, and trusted going forward that you know, there wouldn't be an issue um, with using that space. Um, then he told us that there was no money to do the outdoor bathroom, um, that he'd have to make different changes to the plumbing, etc., to get that done. Although we had an outdoor bathroom before, I don't know why it would. I know I have an idea why it wouldn't have been possible the way that it was designed, but it it wouldn't have taken, in my opinion, a lot of money to change it so we could continue to have that double access to that outdoor bathroom. Um, and then, you know, when the paint dries on the building, the, you know, we get a, uh, a nice tour from Mr. Andre. And, and, the, and the, the shared space is, it's, the building is nice, as I already said before, they did a fantastic job. Um, I don't know how they did it with the limited funds they did, but they did. And, um, you know, this, it's a small space and, and, and he took us around, he told us about the, the air system and how that worked and the doors and he went over the speakers that he bought for for the uh, for the horse folks when they when they use it and demonstrated it and, and, and showed us you know you know it was an act of uh, I don't know I don't know why because there was a system there um, so now we're being told that the key was being taken from us it's a turn in the key Tim was told turn in the key. We're changing the locks in the building. You can't have access to it. That was the short message that he got, and that's why we're here now. 
to try to drill down on that, but I'd like to drill even further. Um, you know, initially, we were given the impression that the building was going to be a shared space. We came to agree on languages so that there was no confusion in the future about who had rights to or who had the ability to access that building. And, and, and everything was, was hunky-dory, quite frankly. You know, we agreed on everything. And even when Mr. Android showed us the final product and the, the shared space, I was happy with it. I'm like, okay, we can still do our, you know, Santa Claus in the corner and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, I was just trying to picture what was going to be happening there. And then the key is taken. And I immediately feel that we've been bamboozled from day one. From day one, when they gave us that, and, they, and, and Mr. Ifrey, and I'm not blaming anybody, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but we were given uh, an outline. They said, tell us what you'd like to see, and it's one-third of what we asked for. Um, and, the, and to learn what do you mean afterwards. By one -third? What do you mean by one-third? I'm sorry. We wanted half the building. We well, got half the building. Well, I, I have the agreement right here, by Chris. And there's not a word in this agreement, not a word, that says anything about half the building. Right. Okay? Are you familiar so, with the gentleman's agreement? I, I'm, I'm here with the signed agreement. Are you familiar with the gentleman's agreement? Where two where groups get together agreement, and they agree what, on one If, if we're going to go with the gentleman's agreement, we don't need a written one from legal counsel. No, we need a written one because you made us have a written one. I made you. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yeah, because you were overstepping. You were overstepping what the animal control office was going to do in that building. There's and a now it's, now it's now it's come to this point, and it's it's been evident to me that the at the beginning when we stepped up and said, "Hold on a minute," with the Park and Rec Commission, we 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 oversee this area. We do all the <coughs> permitting. We, we we do all the scheduling. We do all the maintenance, and. and you're already talking about using our building without us. Day one. It's not your and, building, and it's the town's building. I'm just using your word. You Don't, say we and I alone. No, no. So I'm just it's, using it's, the same it's words. It's the town's building, Chris. It's the state's building. It's, no, it's the town. No, I actually have the quick claim D right here. Yeah. It's the town's building. You're going to study the page. I did read it, sir. Yeah, it well, I'll times. read it to you right here. I've got I don't need you to read it to me. Well, it's not. Why, why are we even talking about it? Because we've got a strong thought. You've got a strong thought. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's not that you're so we've been bamboozled from day one. I don't know what prior conversations happened amongst the Monster committee when our backs were turned, but that's the way we feel. And I'm sorry, it's going to be that way. And nobody's going to change my mind over it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me how it went from we're going to have a nice, happy, shared space to turning your key. And now you've even stepped back a little bit. I don't know who talked to you and said, okay, we'll let them in. If the animal control officer is there, we'll let people in to use the bathroom. And I understand the concern for that. But that's not our fault. We didn't design it. We didn't build it. It's your committee's fault. You guys did that. All right? So that's why we're here. The, key, the whole key thing, to me, quite honestly, is, is second. Second to our concern about being basically run out of that building. Yeah, thank you. I would like, when you talk to your attorney about liability, I'm not even going to Good. 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 Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And to touch base uh, the bathroom, the cost of making it accessible. Yeah. Thank you. Then to see a, a split rail fence, like a vinyl split rail fence one that doesn't really serve a purpose of containing animals or anything. It's kind of it seems like an added cost that could have gone towards a bathroom. Yeah. Plus the rumors of a road being paved also wasn't discussed and seems like that money could have gone towards a bathroom. I'm I'm only, the bathroom. Yeah. I'm only issue of unauthorized access. Yeah, I, I'm only repeating, please. What I was told by the head of the building committee, we can have him in here for next week. In fact, I think we should, because if we're going to have this kind of thing, I, I you know I think we should have had him here. Uh, that is to say, Dan Andre. It would have been a little bit more balanced if we asked for this with Dan Dan Andre, so he could have addressed some of the questions like what you just asked. He has told us that that was a forty thousand dollar job, and he said we can, and and if it was, and I'm I'm not a builder. I'm only telling you what I was told. I think what we need next week is you back here with Dan Andrew. I'm not interested. Well, I'm don't know. What can I tell you? I mean, you're welcome to. I appreciate that. Yeah, you are. So, 
Okay, thank you for your input. Go ahead, please. Mr. Chairman, to you, Mr. Shaw, what can we do to rectify this? Do you have a suggestion? Um, I just, with just some more cooperation with certain members of the board. Okay. If I could, Mr. Chairman, would the access to the bathroom commissioner and preserving your access to the keys progress positively in your minds? Yes. Okay. Wait, wait, let me just qualify this. When you say access to the keys, you're saying keys to the shelter? I'm saying keys to the common room, which they should have had all along. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's and I'm that. saying access to the bathroom, which they should have had all along. Oh, the bathroom is in the shelter. I guess I didn't speak clearly enough. Well, no, you, you did, but you also said that they could use the bathrooms. So what I'm yeah. saying is they could use them. For, last week, Mr. Chairman, you said they couldn't use the bathroom. No, no, I, I you don't know. Look, it, it, you know, we are trying to come up with a way to deal with the flexibility that they would like and that we would like them to have in a way which protects the town. And so we have worked assiduously to establish an approach which would accommodate them and at the same time protect the town of Rainham. That's not a very complicated, maybe it is complicated, I don't know. You know, access to the bathroom is not an issue. The issue is that it cannot be unattended and unsupervised. There are animals in there, it's a holy area. There are no holding shelters in the Commonwealth that allow unattended, allow that the people to go in there that are not uh, uh, trained and, and that are not certified. There's no place in the Commonwealth. Come up with one and we'll have that conversation. I told you, I had a personal call <coughs> with uh, Taunton. They said, no, we'd never let anybody, uh, that, unless they were accompanied by our ACO in the back. So all I can say, uh, Joe, is that the bathroom's in the back and if they want to use the bathroom, and by the way, the events that are in the agreement, I'm sorry, I didn't sign the agreement, I didn't negotiate the agreement. It, 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 the agreement says that Park and Rec will use the common area on annual events. It's there, read it, annual events. What's an annual event? Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, I don't know, whatever else. So whenever they have an annual event that they want to use it, we will work overtime to make it work for them. And we will have somebody there just, to, they can use the bathroom, right. just watch somebody there to be sure that no kid puts their hand in the dog cage and gets bitten. And then who's gonna get sued? It's gonna be town and the town. And I wish the board would really get a, you know, a bit more sympathetic to the, my concern about liability. It's, it, it, there's no problem with accommodating pocket rack, none whatsoever. We're trying to do what is in the best interest of our residents in the town. End of discussion. We'll have this table. You got motion is to table it. Second. Okay, we'll table this the next week. Thank you, Chris. Sorry that we couldn't talk a little bit longer, but we'll do it next week. Okay, thank you. Uh, the finance committee is back. Mr. Chairman, if you want, why don't we get oh, Shaw's done first? Oh yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> have, to have them come up. Yep. This is their time. Where would you like me, Mr. Chair? Just the right here, the middle of the room. room. <laughs> it shouldn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, a motion yes, to call motion. the public hearing. Yes, motion. Yes. yes. Okay. All in favor? Uh, yes. That's at 707. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. This will be fairly quick. I know you have a full agenda. I apologize to be back so soon. I'm right. the change of manager. Uh, Nick Zazula, McDermott, Colty, and Miller here on behalf of Shaw's. Yep. Um, this is, as I prefaced at the last uh, hearing a few weeks ago, uh, this is just another administrative change. Um, one of the uh, officers, the directors, was reassigned. Uh, another one retired. So this is nothing to do with any operational changes to store itself. No changes to layout. Obviously, the change of manager was last time, so that's not changing again. Um, a Mr. Gary Morton, who was previously a director and a vice president, so he was an officer and director uh, with the state and on the liquor license. Um, he is being removed. Uh, he's being replaced by a gentleman named Cody Perdue as a new director. Um, and we're also removing John Scuchamara as director. He was transferred to their Southeast West Division in Arizona or something like that. And he's being replaced by Eric Myers as director. Um, so we had to file this amendment application. Um, we're just looking to update those individuals on the liquor license with the town so that they are consistent with the uh, filing with the state. And that's it. No other changes, no changes to hours or anything like that. Any questions? 
No questions. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a motion. You have to go for public input before there's yeah. a motion. Thank you very much. Any public input? I don't see much like that. Anybody? I don't think we have a TV here, so. I have a motion to approve the request. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. It's done. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Good night. Good luck. Good luck. Good okay, so we have uh, new business. We've done. We, let's come back to the town warrant, please. Okay. So the Finance Committee convened separately, and we recommended Articles 1 and 3, which were corrected to the dollar value. And then we voted to recommend Article 12, the chain and fence at the baseball field. And we voted to recommend Article 13, the three police cruisers. Okay. okay. So all of you yes. are now in yep. agreement with Capital on yep. Article 12. Mr. Chairman, if there's no other discussion, I motion to approve uh, in its totality the town meeting warrant before us with the recommendations attached from both FinCom and Capital. I second that motion. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So done. Thank you for both. FinCom and Capital Plan. Can I just make it clear the posting will not include Yes, correct. correct. Yeah. About what will be sent out. Yes. Okay, so uh, having having done that, we have take take day request. The first is from Evolution Dance Company, and their dates are 11 20, 12 3, and 12. This is very, very 12 7. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, second uh, take day request is from the Juventus Academy Boys, and the date is November 12th. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. So done. Okay, uh, we have. Are we skipping the. Go ahead. Setting, Setting goals. goals. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I spoke to the administrator. He's asked us to table this for one week, and I acquiesced to that, so I motioned to table for one week. Second. Okay, all in favor? And well, the only reason is because the war was so priority. all encompassing. Yep, that's fine. Thank you, uh, Selectman Riley. Uh, town Administrator's report? Uh, well, the big item obviously is the warrant, and I'm happy to say we have come to agreement, and I feel um, a certain sense of accomplishment on that, and I thank everybody for their assistance on this, Chris in particular. Um, uh, Chris uh, was a great asset in this process, and um, I think we made a number of uh, improvements to the warrant, and I look forward to continuing that into the future as we do more warrants into the future. Um, other than the, um, the warrant, I did, uh, I was able to attend a uh, Massachusetts Municipal Manager Association meeting last week. Uh, ironically, um, mind you, they're all over the state, and this one happened to be at the old Scotland Links in Bridgewater, so it was literally a five minute ride away. <laughs> I found that kind of funny. Um, but there were uh, quite a number of uh, town. Uh, managers and town administrators, which included all the Bridgewater. And so I uh, spent, uh, other than listening to the topics at hand, which put, focused on uh, public safety type issues, I uh, spent a lot of time networking with our uh, uh, fellow uh, managers, in particular the manager from uh, uh, Bridgewater. And, uh, I hope to build on that relationship. I think uh, uh, we, uh, um, obviously we share a school system, but uh, there may be other things we can look at sharing as well. So uh, I happen to have known him from the past, uh, so we haven't talked in years, but um, in any case, I found that to be an extremely positive conversation. I also, uh, again, met quite a number of others, including the West Bridgewater manager who happened to work in Dartmouth. So uh, there was little introduction necessary there. Um, 
Other than that, uh, I am going to a legislative update through the MMA this Friday morning. If there are any particular topics that any of the board members wish to uh, find out more about, I will let you know. Um, I do think in the future we uh, should set up a time to talk about ARPA a little more. Uh, specifically, we do have some requests already asked for, but I would suggest before we move forward on that, I have heard from a few departments who indicated to me they would be requesting something had they been asked. So what I'm suggesting is I put out a memo uh, allowing all departments the opportunity to make uh, requests just so we can see the big picture. Um, um, and we can further discuss this at a, uh, a future meeting. Uh, one thing we are trying to get um, obtain is there's uh, some sort of update on the Bristol um, Plymouth uh, uh, school project. Uh, we're expecting there may be some changes in the timelines and uh, Chris is in the process right now of, of trying to obtain those updates and I will be quick to share them once once obtained and that's about it and I thank you so much uh, again for uh, everyone's help on the warrant um, um, and I hope uh, we can have a successful town meeting any comments Seth, like that? no just thank you for your efforts with that along with Chris and bringing that to completion for us thank you Second. No, Ms. Riley hit it all on the head on that. Yeah. I would just add uh, to both the other segments that uh, you do, along with our planning instructor, have done a great job of putting this all together. I know you come in at the last minute, so to speak, uh, and managed to you know, bring this all about in a very, very comprehensive and thorough way. So, congratulations on that. Okay. Uh, Selectman's report. Uh, yes, I would just like to ask everybody to keep in their um, thoughts and prayers, um, hopes for uh, Colin Weaver's safe return and for um, strength and courage for um, the Weaver family and the Waterman family. Um, I mentioned we had a big meeting last night that uh, uh, the grandmother, Colleen's grandmother, Kathy Waterman, uh, before she retired, she was one of our most active Ray volunteers, putting in hundreds of hours. And Kristen was also an active volunteer in our schools. And Colleen just helped out in September with riding kindergarten buses. So certainly, um, it's been great the way the town has come together, and so many um, friends have got together and spreading the word, and just if everyone can, can continue to do that. And definitely want to thank our police department, um, Chief Donovan, and the members of the department, obviously. Um, there, there's, there are no other police departments like our department, and I know they're doing everything and more than they could possibly do to bring Colin home safely. So thank you, Chief. Thank you. Great. Like Echo Miss Riley's comments about uh, Colleen. We hope she returns to us safe and soon. And um, compliments to the police department. The chief and I have had a few conversations about that. I know he and his team are aggressively working. Um, to locate her. Uh, they just put out another update today, and so we appreciate that. And the only other reminder I have is early voting has begun at Town Hall, and it is going on through November 4th. Okay, that, that is, that is such a, I have one item. Um, I did have a conversation today with uh, the town administrator with regard to what the status was of our posting for the health inspector. And I think that posting now is a good three weeks ago. Or, could even be longer, it could be four weeks. Uh, but the bottom line is the response I got is that we have virtually no responses at all. We've had, we had three, but two left. Uh, and the other one, I'm not sure where that sits, but we've had no luck. And you can elaborate on this a little bit if you like, uh, Greg. But my re reason in bringing up the uh, failure to find a full-time health inspector, let alone health director, has, has really caused me to wonder if we ought not to put a serious look at regionalizing our health department. And I'd like to suggest that we put this on the agenda for discussion 
going forward, that perhaps next week, uh, have an agenda item, and let's talk about the potential for regionalizing uh, what the pluses and minuses are, and how we might go about that, because we're certainly running out of time with the part-timers that we have right now, who are working under retirement packages, which limits the total amount of time they can work. So is there some discussion on that? I'd be happy to hear it. No, I, I think we do need to move forward. I think looking into the regionalizing uh, possibility does make sense. Mm -hmm. No, I have no choice. I mean, we just got a new grant that's going to pay for a regional health mm -hmm. inspector. Um, so I think right there is a built-in relationship sure. that we can explore. So okay, so let's put that uh, <coughs> let's put that on the agenda for further discussion. Okay, Harry, no other no other uh, selectmen's business. Any press time? None. Emergency business? I think we've already had it. Citizen and community input? None. Uh, performance of administrative duties, approval of town of rain in invoice and payroll warrants? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Approval of Rainham police invoice and payroll warrants? So moved. Second? I abstain. All in favor? Aye. So done. Uh, I will. Ask for an adjournment of the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.